A grazing trial was run to determine the productivity benefits of the revegetation work at Kamaruka. The trial compared the weight changes and general health of lambs grazing the project site with lambs grazing on Lucerne. The weight gains were significant on both the Lucerne and the revegetated saline land, with the lambs on the Lucerne putting on more weight, as expected. None of the lambs suffered any ill health during the trial. Well, this area here, it wouldn't even run, well, wouldn't even run 10 sheep to, to uh, 70 acres, but now we've got 100 lambs in here grazing on saltbush. They've been in here for probably a month now. They'll stop in here hopefully till end of January, early February. It, uh, it helps to be able to put, keep them in here so they can get on a normal year, this being a drought it's not normal, but it will help the loosens get away for two or three weeks. Then you can rotate through the loosen and the salt push. We found out last year that sheep could stop in here for quite a considerable time without losing any of their, their condition and then finish them off on the loosen when it got more established. Sheep grazing on saltbush need constant access to fresh drinking water. If you uh, happen to taste a bit of saltbush yourself, you definitely need a drink after it. And the same with the sheep, they graze close to the, to the uh, water troughs. They'll have, have a little eat of a, a um, saltbush and then as we can see now, one's come in for a, a drink and then they'll go away for a minute or so come back and have more. Monitoring changes in vegetation across the project area involves photographing and measuring selected plants every two months. By graphing the changes in plant volume over time, the impacts of grazing, along with the ability of fodder plants to recover from grazing, can be seen. It has been incredible to watch the growth rates of the particular uh, plants that we are uh, recording. Some of the other things that I've noted there was the, with the, uh, the salt bush, uh, after they had been completely stripped by the sheep in the grazing part of the project, the regeneration has been astronomical. One minute there's just sticks and next time you're down there they're just covered again. Farm forestry provides multiple benefits, one of which is habitat for wildlife. An initial bird survey detected 35 species on or near the project land. The remnant vegetation supported the greatest diversity and number of birds, followed by the new farm forestry. Few birds were observed on the grassland and adjacent farmland. Wildlife diversity is expected to increase with time as the project site develops. The Kamaruka project is a good example of how public funds can be invested confidently in a well-organised community group to produce meaningful research outcomes. Well, I think that it's, it's important to actually be able to, to get it started when you're, you're not sure of what you're doing. We've been able to, to get all this established and do it so well. And, and, but in this case, I think it's, it's much better in, in that um, generally that's where it finishes. People plant trees for salt and walk away and, and leave it and uh, we've been able to continue to monitor it and it's just amazing to see how excited you can get a grown man like Phil to when he comes along to the meetings with his graphs and uh, he's just making groundbreaking discoveries all the time with such a relatively small amount of the budget. NUFG members take great pride in the rapid transformation at Kamaruka. Unbelievable to think that there's a drought on and we've got this fresh growth everywhere and the stock looking well. It provides a real spiritual lift to us to see green trees growing in otherwise desolate and barren landscape. Oh, it's been an amazing transformation from what you still see next door from just a salt pan to now it's hard to, you can't see across it, it's just green. Australia has huge areas of salt affected land that could be returned to productive use. NUFG's Kamaruka project clearly demonstrates one successful approach founded on good science 
and driven by an active community group. I think don't be daunted by the prospect of uh, losing your land and you have a look around here we've turned we've transformed this area in what was becoming a wasteland into a very valuable piece of land that um, you can protect your stock in in bad weather and your stock are actually there's um, statistics showing that stock are actually putting on weight at better than a lot of other areas are in so don't be daunted by the by the prospect just have a go to see trees that I'm standing against now this high and have this shelter is just phenomenal it's exciting and you know, a lot of us are on just a huge learning curve here. It's about, I sometimes think it's about 80 degree learning curve, learning about stuff that we all grew up with to have thousands of sheep on a place and, and you get a drought like this and the dust blows and everything. That, and to see something like this, that sheep can run amongst and have shelter, uh, still have feed is just fantastic. And uh, it's exciting for everyone. Highly recommend it to everyone to have a go at it all in a time of drought and stress, just to come down here and just stand around and look around and see the amazement of what's been transformed in the last two or three years it just helps your day to day life. It's certainly part of what uh, drives me. I mean, I have, I have a particular interest in this site um, because of the very detailed research that we're able to do through our monitoring program here combined with the treatments that we have. Um, but the ability to take that information back to a group and get immediate positive feedback from that group uh, once a month and to see them turn up to the field days with all of the other people that are involved here really I guess is just a way of of making you understand that all of this is in fact worthwhile, that everybody has the same interest in the area in terms of understanding the processes, understanding the relationship between the vegetation and the saline area and the water balance. And uh, I guess it's been a situation where when we've been able to communicate that well to people, um, it just seems to expand the value of the project and the knowledge and the feedback that people get out of it.